parents let child die because God makes no mistakes. Recently, the Michigan Court of Appeals declared a ruling that allowed a couple who let their newborn child die due to negligence to regain custody of their three other children. This Wait, decision, what? Yes. This decision is the latest update in a years-long saga involving a Christian couple whose child, Abigail uh, Piland, died in 2017 after her medical needs were neglected by her parents. The parents belong to two Pentecostal Christian groups called Free Saints Assembly and Faith Tech Ministries. The medical examiner later attributed the death to jaundice-related problem, problems that were treatable. The uh, Pelans were charged with involuntary manslaughter, which meant that they faced up to 15 years behind bars if convicted. In 2018, the couple had another baby with the same health issues as Abigail. That girl, along with her brothers, was is in custody with her maternal grandparents. On April 15th, 2021, the Michigan Court of Appeals filed a new trial for the couple because previously a jury wasn't allowed to consider the role of religious beliefs when the couple skipped care for the child. The court stated that under state law, parents could not be found negligent for solely for quote, legitimately practicing their religious beliefs. Eugene Volka, a law professor said that this decision is legally correct, even though ethically unsound. The latest court hearing lends a couple the chance of regaining custody of their three other children. Hold on. So wait, what state, like, is this based on laws of what? Like a state or? The... This is in Michigan. Michigan. Okay. So in Michigan, you get to have custody, like you get to murder your child. And as long as it's based on deeply held beliefs you get to keep your other children is that what i'm hearing hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy kali you know like me then that means that you probably want more blasphemous art well i have good news for you if you subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below then you get a free booklet of some of the tastiest blasphemous art available today so if you want some of this delicious blasphemy and we're so generous that we update it for you guys weekly for free all you have to do is sign up for our newsletter below uh, you can also go to blasphemousart.com slash ebook that's blasphemousart.com slash ebook sign up with your email and you get free gifts of this tasty blasphemy what could be better so make sure you sign up link below rivka okay so there's a couple things um it's not murder it's child endangerment and neglect the child was yeah born i was with exaggerating a, a billy yeah. rubin problem that's easily solved but super high levels of this billy rubin can cause liver failure and other things depending on you know how severe it is so um they committed child neglect and child endangerment um and then the child died so the issue isn't just the deeply held beliefs the judge was talking about individual beliefs is all the the um court was heard on they were saying they had individual beliefs but they weren't briefed on their religious beliefs as if individual beliefs are somehow not or rather if not, as somehow religious beliefs are not individual beliefs they are and that somehow if you call an individual belief a religious belief and it's believed also by other groups of people that gives you some sort of higher authority on your set of beliefs okay. it seems like it sets like a really poor legal precedent that people who adhere to a set of religious beliefs versus just beliefs are okay. being judged by a different law which means that they can commit this ne negligence and endangerment 
and not be held responsible for the consequences. All right, so let me rephrase my question and I, can I get a short answer to this one? Um, so in Michigan, if you have religious beliefs, not other people who have deeply held beliefs, it has to be specifically religious beliefs. If you put your, ch your own child in danger and they die as a result, if it was based on religious beliefs in Michigan, that means you get to you you still get custody over your other children. But if you did the same thing to your children and they died, and it wasn't based on religious beliefs, it was some other beliefs. It was deeply held beliefs that was not religious in nature, and your children die. One of your child die as a result because your ideas that led to that was not religious. In that situation, you're gonna lose custody of your other children. Is that, am I understanding this correctly? That's my understanding. But one clarification is that they the are, give, are they, are, they are giving the opportunity to potentially regain custody. They don't have custody yet, but they are being given that opportunity because their beliefs are religious. This is the United States of America, right? And this is the standard. I, I do see a lot of people commenting on how bad the decision was by the judge. However, I wonder, did the judge have any choice? Like, was this, was his ta hands tied by the law? The judge, she said that this was the law. And that was okay. part of the discussion by the um, other commentary, commenters who's saying it's, unethical but it's legally a correct decision um but what i find so interesting is the judge talking about the 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 jury was only briefed on individual beliefs not religious beliefs and that was part of the reason why they won this appeal to petition for custody and i just it so what that law in Michigan is saying is that there's two separate laws. One for people who ha hold beliefs, whatever those may be, and one for people who call whatever the beliefs they hold religious. And so therefore, the people who call those beliefs religious somehow have more that has more authority and therefore there's two separate jurisprudence one for non-religious belief people and one for religious belief people Susanna well and Rivka is completely correct and I wanted to point out something important so this child Abigail died and then her two older brothers were taken from the parents um taken out of their custody during this time, they had another child. This child had the same condition as Abigail. They were prepared to let this other child die the same way until the state took them from their custody and gave this child the treatment that her sister never got the chance to have. And she survived. And I want to wow. clarify something too. Like, it, a lot of times people don't understand when it comes to medical treatment or procedures with children, parents cannot consent to those things. They can only authorize. The only person who can give consent is the person the procedure is being done on. Since children aren't old enough to do that, the parents have to authorize. And that's what makes a judge also acting in loco parentis, which is a duty of care to authorize specific treatments. So the reason I bring this up is because people fail to understand sometimes how the difference between the two and also how is it that the judge can authorize something that should be the parent's job and their duty of care, right? The, the judge is acting as parents. So by doing that, you are de facto saying that this is the job of the parent 
to do this duty of care. But because they are refusing to authorize, the judge is now stepping in and acting as the parent and then providing the duty of care. So it's really important to understand that because the fact that the judge did that tells you that there is a duty to that child because they're not old enough to make any decisions for themselves that you must act. Yeah, uh, secular rarity saying, damn, Rivka always has good points. True, true. Um, one last question. Is this not unconstitutional? Like, is cannot this be, this be challenged, Mr. Gunn? Like, the fact that we have two laws for two different kinds of people? Is there any way to challenge this? You could bring it up on appeal. You could change the legislation would be the way to do it. That, mm. that would be the best way is to change either. Now, I didn't read the Constitution of the state of Michigan, whether this is in the Constitution or whether this is just a specific statute. But that'd be the way to do it is to remove that provision from the statutes, from the uh, criminal statute or the legal yeah. statute. Well, I mean, it's in the, I mean, I'm, I don't, I'm not a legal expert, but I'm assuming treating people equally and not having religion in the government should be enough excuse for um, like an organization like the Freedom From Religion Foundation to challenge these state laws, bringing up, bring it up with the Supreme Court, no? Well, first of all, the Supreme Court has to agree to hear it, okay, which they probably won't. And it's a custody case, so doubt that. But the way to challenge it is to change the law. That's the best way, is to yeah. introduce a bill in Michigan that takes this provision out of the Constitution or out of Michigan criminal code. And what I find really interesting is I I should do some more research on this and come back because I wonder if it's the same for civil law because the burden of proof in civil law isn't as high as criminal law, right? So that's one thing that's different. Um, there's other differences. So I, I, I'm just curious if you can be held civilly liable because – Custody is a civil thing. The kid dying is a criminal thing. And they're still being tried on that too for manslaughter. So yeah. if, so sorry, I, I should have said, so if you, if you can get out of something in civil court because you have religious beliefs, does that mean you can also use that argument in criminal court since the burden of proof is much higher in criminal court? I don't know. It seems like a very um, poor precedent. It's very slippery slope. Um, because, you know, if I had a religion that believed that I needed to kill my children when they reach puberty, and I had a group of people that also believed that, would I then be allowed to do that and then have more children? Would the state allow me to do that? You know, so I I find this just so strange and absolutely horrific because this is a child we're talking about. This isn't someone who chose as an adult not to go get medical attention, right? And people are always, particularly politicians and judges and religious people are talking about the children, the children. We got to care about the children. Now, here's a clear example of someone who potentially was going to let this exact same situation of neglect and endangerment happen a second time. And the state is saying, well, you know, we may allow you to petition to get your children back so it'll happen again or have another baby and we won't take it away because it, you have a religious belief. But I really think what's so really interesting and important is the judge's focus on individual beliefs versus religious beliefs. 
because religious beliefs are individual beliefs. Individual beliefs don't have to be religious beliefs, but they're right. really yeah. one and the same. Well, yeah, but except one of them enjoys privilege and the other one doesn't. Exactly, and that's the point. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's double standards. In the yeah, by the way, actually, this is very interesting because uh, a lot of people say, like, Islam um, to, enjoys uh Two, di two different laws in Europe. Like some people are like accusing European countries of having two different kinds of laws, one for everyone else and one for Islamic communities. Well, we can see that at least in the United States, we have that the same situation with, Islam with Christianity. Like you don't have to go like go all Sharia uh, on us to tell people like, oh, like you know how Mariam Namozi has this, campaign just one law one law for all people like every time that campaign comes up people think like oh yeah we're talking about islam M muslim communities in european countries well apparently not that's not the only case christianity enjoys separate laws as well hey guys youtube has fully demonetized our channel for supposedly hateful and harmful conduct and um, without telling us what we did wrong um if we get to 1,000 patrons, we will be able to keep paying all our team, our editors, our artists, without ever having to worry about monetization again, which would be amazing. Yay! So please support Atheist Republic on Patreon. Link in the description below.